Hello everyone, my name is Arun and I'm a Big Data Solutions Architect here at AWS. In this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the advanced techniques for monitoring AWS Glue jobs. We will cover monitoring Glue jobs using Spark UI, CloudWatch logs, and metrics. Before we dive into the demo, let me start by defining the Spark UI. Spark UI is a web-based interface for monitoring and debugging Spark applications. It provides insights into job runs resource utilization, and performance. For those of you not familiar with the Spark UI, let us take a quick look. The main page focus on jobs. Your individual Spark application may be broken down into one or more Spark jobs, and you can see a high-level view of all the running and finished jobs here. You'll see the ID, the name, submit time, duration, etc. The Stage tab here visualizes the job's execution plan. It provides more granular details on the number of stages for your job. For each stage, you can see the task, the parallelism, the shuffle, etc. You can also explore the DAG. DAG or Directed Acyclic Graph help you visualize the dependencies and flow of task within each stage. Let us transition to a practical example that shows how debugging and performance tuning work hand in hand for glue jobs. For that, I have two simulated data set, customers and sales. Both of these data set are in parquet format. The customer data set contains about 2 million records and the sales data set contains approximately 300 million records. We will join these data set and write the results back to S3. Here is a sneak peek into the code. It is very straightforward. We read the two data sets join them based on a key and write the results back to the target. Let's now execute the job. It would take about four minutes for it to run. While it runs, let me quickly walk you through the job configurations. You can see that this is a PySpark job with 10 workers on Glue 4.0. Glue version 3.0 and above supports the built-in serverless Spark UI. You can see that the Spark UI logs are written to an S3 location of your choice. And here is the configuration to enable the same. If you move on to the Runs tab and then to the Spark UI tab, you can access the Spark UI for a particular job run. Since our job is still running, I'll show you an alternate route to get to the same UI. For that, click on the Job Run Monitoring link here on the left side menu. Navigate to your job and access the run details. Next, scroll down to the bottom of the page where you can find the Spark UI for that run. Let's now head back to our job. We see that our job has completed in slightly over four minutes, which isn't bad at all. Let's look at the Spark UI. You can see there are different tabs here corresponding to jobs, stages, executor, etc. Let's explore the stages. You can see that the application consisted of five stages, each one corresponding to different phases of our job. You can also see that the internal optimizer has decided to skip two stages, which is also good. Coming back to the completed stages, we can see that these two stages are possibly reading the Parquet metadata. There aren't any inputs or shuffle. Going to the next stage, you can see multiple tasks telling us that these has been processed in a distributed manner. What is important here is to notice that there is quite a lot of shuffling that is involved. You can see close to 23 GB of data shuffled across the network. Let's quickly look at the DAG. The parquet file is read. To perform the join, the data is shuffled across the network so that each executor can obtain the data it needs. The exchange operator here in the DAG signifies the shuffling of data between executors. The other stage is going to be identical. You can see the exchange here in the DAG. Moving on to the last stage, you can see from the DAG that the shuffle data is read and the remainder of the job is executed. Using the Spark UI, so far we have been able to trace how the job executed. An improvement to this job would be to minimize shuffle. As you can see here, in this stage, the input is 150 meg, which is relatively small. This should fit into the executor memory and we could perform a broadcast join that avoids shuffle. For broadcast join, let us set the auto broadcast join threshold to over 150 megs, let's say 256 megs. The default threshold, as you may already know, is 10 MB. 
Setting this parameter will now instruct Spark to broadcast inputs lesser than or equal to 256 meg. Let's rerun our job with a small change. Now that our job has completed, first thing to note is that this job ran in under 4 minutes, which is a good sign. Let's look at the stages. This time, you can see that there are only 4 stages. The first two are identical, dealing with our input parquet metadata. The next stage with 36 tasks deal with the smaller input file. And the broadcast exchange signals that the file is read and broadcasted to the executors. You can see that none of the stage has any shuffle rates. Let's open the last stage. Here, we read the data from the larger parquet file and continue with the remainder of the job. There is no exchange operator nor any data shuffle involved. This example demonstrated a basic workflow for using the Spark UI to optimize Glue ATL jobs. The key takeaways are, Spark UI allows inspecting low-level details of job execution to identify and troubleshoot issues. With Glue Serverless Spark UI, the UI is automatically provisioned without needing any manual setup. You can now implement your own use cases leveraging the Spark UI to monitor and tune Glue ETL jobs for performance. Let's now switch gears and move on to another topic, logging in AWS Glue. Anytime you run a Glue job, you can access the running logs on the continuous logs tab as shown here. It shows both the Spark driver logs and your application logs from the code. This plank in the advanced properties section of our job controls whether or not the continuous logging is enabled. Just be mindful of the fact that if you enable continuous logging, the logs are available in CloudWatch only after the job completes. The Run Details tab contains links to different log types, All Logs, Output Logs, and Error Logs. All Logs is a consolidated view of both output and error logs. Output Logs are standard output log printed during the job execution. And Error Logs are errors and stack traces that helps debug job failures. When debugging a failed job, first navigate to the error logs view. This shows CloudWatch log streams for the job run, including individual executor streams and the driver stream. The individual executor stream can be inspected for a specific executor issue. But the driver log gives us a full picture of the job execution. Once we open the driver log stream, we see a lot of informational messages. Let's skip through all of these and scroll down to the actual error message. We see for this job run, our job failed because of a missing library. We can stop our troubleshooting right here, get back to our code or configs and fix it before relaunching the job. Now that you have familiarized yourself with how to navigate the glue job logs, let us move on to the next topic Metrics. Glue jobs send metrics to CloudWatch. To be able to send and visualize those metrics, ensure that these flags are turned on. Metrics can be seen right here on the Metrics tab, or you can log in to CloudWatch console. When you log into the CloudWatch console, you can see, see that there are job metrics which provides high-level insights into job performance and resource utilization. And there are also more granular operational metrics that helps you identify performance issues, bottlenecks, data skews, and other optimization opportunities. For example, if we filter the job metrics by a specific job ID, we can see metrics such as driver heap, executor heap, file system read writes, etc. Remember our previous job which we optimized using broadcast join? This is the corresponding memory utilization metrics of the two runs, and you can clearly spot the difference. With that, we come to the end of this demo. By leveraging Spark UI, CloudWatch logs, and metrics, you can gain visibility into job execution, diagnose errors, and optimize performance. I believe Glue jobs are no longer black boxes for you, and this demo enables you to create high-quality data integration jobs using Glue. Thank you.